And what's the result out of all of this? So we have a win-win uh, situation here for consumers because they get agents uh, that are more um, personalized to them. So they get more tailored experiences and uh, intent-driven actions. And at the same time, uh, brands get to understand with their agents uh, their consumers a lot better because they have access to more connected and rich data, verifiable data to, uh, uh, to actually uh, work with. And uh, why are these agents safe, reliable, and uh, uh, secure? Well, they use, um, because they use the decentralized knowledge graph, they use actually both sides of the, what we call the AI brain. So we have the decentralized knowledge graph, which is more factual. It's uh, deterministic, um, uh, logical, has the access to the verifiable knowledge. And then on the other hand, we have the generative AI models that are probabilistic, they are more predictive, but uh, they enable this natural interaction uh, that, uh, that the uh, left part of the brain does not. And why this matters is because in this kind of composition, you get both. You get, uh, you, know, you have ensured, so the left side, the decentralized knowledge graph, uh, ensures that we have uh, trust and reliability. So we have that verifiable knowledge that uses GS1 standards, but also any other type of standards that are, uh, that are out there, they can be used. Um, and then connected data. And at the same time then, on the other hand, we have the generative AI, which is able to um, provide agents with that facility to tap into that knowledge, use it, and then execute certain actions. So recognize our intent and, and drive it further. And uh, the result is what? We have agents that are intelligence, trusted, uh, and uh, of course intent driven because they have access to all of this information about the consumers and, uh, and brands alike. And how does this all kind of look like uh, in the end from a just, uh, I don't want to go in deep, deep into the technology, but how it looks like uh, a very uh, briefly from an architectural point of view, we have that trust layer, which is also the foundation for where uh, verifiable credentials are issued. So those are different blockchains that the decentralized knowledge graph can work with. We have the knowledge graph, uh, so knowledge base, where all of these either public pieces or private pieces of information or knowledge are connected. And then we have the verifiable AI on top, which are the agents that are looking into that knowledge base based on what they can access and uh, doing cool stuff uh, uh, based on what intent uh, we had. And that's uh, kind of a quick, quick intro into how this intention economy uh, could be, could look like in a, uh, in a done in a trusted and verifiable way. And uh, just taking also a step back, back looking at you know the history also of GS1, and we've been working with GS1 uh, or partnered with GS1 for uh, quite a number of years. But we started, so the uh, efficiency of revolution started in 1974 when the first barcode was scanned. We are now in the last years. We put 2024 here. I know Phil, you've been working on this for quite a bit longer, but it feels like. Last year was uh, the year where QR codes and uh, the digital link codes um, really started picking up. So have this revolution of um, digitizing, uh, digitizing the products, uh, connecting them to online, um, them being able to, uh, so uh, connecting them to dynamic and, uh, and uh, hopefully verifiable product, uh, pro uh, product data online. And then now in 2025, when we have all of this foundation uh, and going forward, we can actually use this, uh, com this combination of verifiable data on the decentralized knowledge graph, which uses GS1 digital, uh, so GS1 standards uses digital link to access it, um, and the AI agents to perform tasks autonomously um, on our behalf. So it might sound also a little bit futuristic, but these things are already happening, and uh, there are a number of actually ways to use agents already um, with the decentralized knowledge graph, but also in a, in a broader, uh, broader way. And I'd like to show you actually a quick uh, demo of how uh, this uh, autonomous uh, shopping experience with using the decentralized knowledge graph uh, and uh, GS1 standards could actually look like. And I'll ask the tech team to play the video. We're ready. Okay, so here we have a bottle of your favorite Prosecco. Imagine you take out the phone, you scan it, digital access, uh, the AI agent access, the digital link uh, uh, provided information, so, and adds it as a memory into your knowledge bank. And then you have an interaction with your, uh, with your agent. It can be on X, as I did here, but uh, uh, you can have it anywhere, right? So omni-channel interaction with agents is becoming a, a thing, so you can interact with the same agent on Telegram, on WhatsApp, or wherever else you, you would want. 
And um, now I can ask him, for example, do you remember that bottle of Prosecco uh, that we liked last week uh, and suggest something that would go along actually with that? And what's happening now is that agent, because we added the, the, the digital link, um, took us to the product data and we added it to the, to the decentralized knowledge graph, the agent will actually find that piece of knowledge. Remember, it will take that memory and remember what we actually, uh, uh, what the, the Prosecco that we had. And here we had it, right? So there is uh, this, this uh, specific brand of Prosecco that uh, the agent remembered, and it uh, suggests some pairing that would go along uh, with it. But it doesn't only suggest the pairing, it also suggests, uh, asks us what do we want to, uh, uh, what do we want them to find the best deals. So say, of course, we find the best, uh, uh, we want to see what the best deals are, and now the agent will actually go online, look into different uh, uh, marketplaces, find the, the best prices for the uh, products that it recommended, and uh, actually here in this case it found uh, some things on Amazon for a total of uh, 12.98, and um, who ask us to confirm the purchase. And all we need to do uh, as, as uh, interacting with the agent said, sure thing, go ahead, that sounds great. And then the agent in the back, uh, because it has all of the information it needs also to actually make that purchase in the private uh, components of our knowledge base, it is able to actually execute that purchase, send us an email confirmation, and uh, it should actually uh, show it now. So we have the order confirmed, we have the email uh, in our inbox, and uh, then the next thing that, that happens, which is uh, very important, is actually that all of this, this whole interaction that we just had, um, will also be created as a memory on the decentralized knowledge graph, um, so that next time when we interact with the agent, it will know. It will know that we added uh, the, uh, that we bought, that we purchased these additional items. It will know what we talked about, and this is how it actually looks like on the decentralized knowledge graph. It's uh, what we call a knowledge asset. All of these are verifiable, issued as verifiable credentials on the graph, so each of them will have an, uh, representing, uh, represented also by an NFT token that can also be transferred in terms of ownership. But the agent then has uh, access to this if it's, of course, your private agent and if you have uh, private access, uh, has access to your private data. And uh, just a quick summary of the conversation, how, how this kind of looked like. And this, this was on, on X with the log, two log profiles. You can do this on, uh, this, have these interactions really across a variety of channels. Um, like I mentioned before, Telegram, WhatsApp, uh, even on our own uh, Origin Trail Edge node, you could interact with these agents uh, in a similar manner. And this is really kind of where we see the, how do we see the intention economy uh, functioning well with trust, with uh, verifiability and all based on verifiable credentials at the end of the day.